One of the biggest disconnects that every single business faces is the separation and the wall between sales on one side and the rest of the organization on the other side. And with the introduction of sales and order management, ServiceNow has broken down this wall and gave the front office access to the same unified data model that the rest of the business already relies on. And so in this video, we will talk through sales and order management. We'll look at the processes, and we'll look at a demo later on. My name is Michael Klim. I am one of the architects here at GlideFast Consulting, and I'll be walking you step by step through sales and order management. In order to understand the sales process, we have to take a step back and look at some fundamental concepts that every single business faces. And we have to look at it from the perspective of the customer, right? And this is really to separate the organization into three very distinct modules and so it all starts with the front office in which we deliver a promise we deliver a promise and where we say dear customer we can solve your problem this is really what it all boils down to it's making a promise and of course helping the customer to accept this promise now once the deal is signed we'll move over into the middle office in which we translate the promise into our internal processes so that when we reach the back office we are able to use the established workflows that we have on the platform and fulfill the promise. Now, this is where the traditional playing field of ServiceNow is, is the back office and routing the work through the entire enterprise, whether that's HR, whether that's incidents, whether that's understanding the underlying network, whether it's running projects, all of these things are supporting the original promise to the customer. Now, the traditional interface between the customer on ServiceNow was in the back office, and that is done with customer service management and field service management. This is the extent that the customer was able to communicate uh, with the internal stakeholders, right? Which is through the cases and the work orders and everything that bubbled up from the internal processes all the way up to the customer. But of course, Customer service management and field service management are both modules that connect the customer to the back office, meaning that the business and the promise is already fulfilled at that point. So now here's really where order management comes into place, right? It's translating the promise that was originally made into order management and contract management, which have been on the platform for a few years already but uh, we're not as prevalent and now with the introduction of sales and order management into the platform we are now able to go the entire sales cycle and look at leads opportunities and quotes when it reads in the sales world it's oftentimes cpq configure pricing and quotes this is an entirely new concept that was introduced into service now and this is what we're going to look at next so let's break down the sales cycle into its components. I will start out with the lead. The lead is a person who showed some kind of an interest into our products or in our services by downloading an ebook maybe or by subscribing to a newsletter. Any kind of action that they took that indicate that they are looking for some kind of a solution for a problem that they're facing. And at this stage, we don't have a lot of information about them. We probably have their email address, we might have their phone number, their first name, these kind of information that indicate that we can reach out to them and that is exactly what we do. We qualify them and make sure that it's a good fit and if it is and if they're willing to move forward, we turn everything into an opportunity. Now the opportunity is a little bit more specific because we know of their interests, we know that they have the possibility to move forward with the deal and we are now at a stage where we are talking numbers and opportunities are used not just as a next stage but also as a base for forecasting the numbers for the sales manager right so we can look at the forecast for the next quarter we can look at the numbers for the next year it's a good indicator on how the sales might look like for a particular time frame so when we're at the stage, we have a pretty good idea of what the customer wants. We're putting together an offer with a 
product configurator that gives us an overview of the products it gives us an estimate of the price and we're able to configure it all for them in order to move forward once again in order to go down to the quota right once once we're at the quote stage um, the customer is pretty committed and oftentimes it takes two or three rounds um, a little bit back and forth a little bit of a negotiation at this point in order to nail down the final numbers and sign the contract which is then being sent out after the quote is accepted by the customer now once the deal is signed we move forward into the order management part right we are going now into the fulfillment of the promise that we have given the customer and we are now decomposing the actual offer that we gave them into our internal processes and this is now where all of our workflows will kick off and tasks are being created and assigned and workflows are being executed and um, now everything is coming together so that eventually in the end once the order is fulfilled and the account becomes a customer of ours we can now move into the CSM and FSM part of the sales cycle which means the support of the product and all of these workflows that have been kicked off now are now being assigned as sold items as asset as contracts within the account and now this is where we see the CSM FSM part and the sales cycle is now complete and we are now able to move forward and support the customer in the solution that we have provided to them we are logged as Asher Sky who is one of our sales representatives and we are looking at a list of leads that are associated with us and we went out and went on a trade show and gathered a new lead and a new lead that we now want to enter into the system and for that we click on the new button up here and we are presented with a pop-up that shows us a few fields that we can enter and you notice that only the last name is mandatory and that's a design on purpose because especially when you start out this journey in the lead stage you do not have all of the information available and oftentimes very little and so we do enter what we know about that person in our case it's the first name the last name and the email address and of course the lead source which we mentioned earlier was the trade show we keep the stage as new and we create the lead by clicking on this button here at the bottom now we click up here on the link and now we open the record so on the left side here you see all of the information that we already entered into the system if you scroll down further you can enter even more details if that's necessary in our case we are pretty happy with the information we gathered and we can focus on the priority activities on here on the right that panel is important because it shows us all of the tasks that we have to get done in order to communicate with that lead and qualify them for our solutions right we want to make sure that they are a good fit and that we can move forward into an opportunity in our case we have qualified them and we are quite happy with that and we are ready to move them into an opportunity so we click on convert lead and click on to an account So this opens up a new pop-up box in which we can select from a few different options first of all is the account here we have to select if we want to create a completely new account or if we want to choose an existing one and if we look at the email address we do remember that we might have that account already before and so before we create a new account we search for an existing one and it turns out that this account is already a customer with us and so we can choose an existing one now that is different with the contact because James is someone we just met at a trade show and if we search for him oh we don't even have to search for him we can just no see there you go he's not there and so we should probably create a completely new contact because it's not just new to us but it's also a completely new contact from that existing Shutterbug 
organization that is already a customer with us. Now the opportunity itself is something that we do have to create. We do have to change it uh, from new customer to renew or upsell, uh, depending on how this opportunity will go, because of course we created choose existing account. And so the stage we can leave it qualify and the owner is us, Azure Sky. So let's convert that lead into an opportunity. There we go, our success. Now we click on the opportunity to open it up. So here we see the opportunity and on the left, you can see all the information that was pulled in from the lead and on the right, you see some financial predictions. So the deal size, for example, in this case, it's $5,000 and we can also enter the probability of success. So in our case, we estimate it to be at 75%. Now, if you scroll down a little further, you have other financial indicators. As you can see here, all of them are at zero, but they are quite important. Now, they are at zero because we have not had any products yet to our opportunity, which we can do through the product configurator right here. Now, on the left here, you see the different categories. You have the product catalogs right here that you can choose from. In our case, we'll add the premium support plan on the right. And I want you to take a look at the total monthly recurring revenue here at the top and how it changes after I click the button right here. So now we see $600 were added to the total monthly recurring revenue. And by clicking on return and repair hardware replacement, clicking on add, we can also add a total one-time price of $400 into the opportunity. So now we click back on details and we see that these prices changed right here. And we might be wondering where those prices are coming from. Well, they're all pulled from the standard price list. In this case, that's a baseline pricing for all of our products that we defined in the standard price list. But we can also define account-based pricing, which is a different pricing for every account, which of course includes things like discounts, um, bundled pricing, and things like that. Okay, so now this looks good. So we can turn this opportunity into a quote by clicking at the button up here. Okay, let's open it up. The quote is also a little bit more detailed than the opportunity itself because if you look at the catalog item, what you'll notice is that the premium support plan doesn't have an add button anymore, but instead you can customize it from here. And so you have multiple options that you can add to the quote. Now, in this case, it would just add a new product. So what we would want to do is go back into the line items of the quote, click on modify or rather customize and change it here so in our case we just add the first two and you notice that they got added to the current selection of course with the price and then once we click update it is reflected in our quote and also added to the line items okay so the code looks good that means we can mark it as complete and from here you see a couple different options that are available to you what i want to show you here is uh, initiate contract that you can click from here and we'll see a pop-up in which we have a few options to choose from first we'll select the type of paper in our case we sign our own contract meaning we'll select own paper and the contract type in this case will be a sales contract. We'll select an electronic signature, even though we could select a wet signature as well if we wanted to. Now the start date in this case will be the beginning of the month here and the end will be the 31st. And now we'll click on initiate. So there are a few things that uh, I want to point your attention to. The first thing is the sales contract right here. You can click on it and get a preview 
of the actual sales contract or you can download it right here that is auto generated from a template that we have fed into the system early on and so there's always the same template just with the different variables of course that are being imported from the actual uh, contract now the next thing i want to point towards are the signatories right now so in our case we are asher sky and we had a sales agent who initiated the contract meaning the first sales signatory on this contract is asher now once we have signed it as asher then it gets sent over to james smith who is our representative or our contact over at shutterbox so once he signed it as well then it gets sent back into the system and it's marked as finished now we can start this entire process by sending it for signature and then it gets sent to the different email addresses directly from service now so the entire process can get managed through service now so now the code is complete and we're looking at it as James Miller who's one of the fulfillment agents here and you know none of the things can be changed here none of the values but what can be done is to create an order out of the quote now that it's complete so that's exactly what we're going to do we click on create order and open it up the newly created order so from now we see the familiar order line items already uh, we want to double check and make sure that that's what we wanted if we wanted to we could add a few other items as well but in this case we are good and so we review and submit it now again we have a different view here we can double check as everything is according to our plan and what we expect it to look like and now we can click on submit all right so now the order was submitted and we can see that the order line items are set into place and now the only thing left for us to do is to approve thanks for joining us for our overview on sales and order management on service now we hope you enjoyed it and if you did please leave a like and if you want more videos like that, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.